The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Kingdom Connection. I'm so glad that you're watching today. I really believe I've got a word that's going to bless you and challenge you. As you can see, I'm coming to you today from a different location. I'm in Bristow, Virginia on the campus of Youth for Tomorrow. This is an amazing ministry that Coach Joe Gibbs, who at one time was the championship Washington Redskin coach in the NFL, and then later was known for his racing teams in NASCAR. Uh, he's just been a winner for a long time in a lot of ways, but maybe his greatest win was founding this amazing organization. This is an orphanage. This is a place like James talked about in the book of James in the Bible that pure and undefiled religion is to care for the widows and the orphans. And particularly what is so powerful about this place is they take in children who uh, have been thrown into the court system who are undocumented minors. After they are attained at the border, they go into the legal system. Where do they go? They go to a place like Youth for Tomorrow that I'm standing in. And it is a beautiful, beautiful ministry where 160 children are constantly coming in, being ministered to, clothed, fed, educated, counseled, medical attention is given, and then uh, at some point, the, the uh, children are released to wherever the courts say they need to go. But they're shown the love of Jesus Christ. And this is the actual room where every week, twice a week, they are taught about a Jesus who loves them, a Jesus who will never leave them and never forsake them, a Jesus who understands where they are, understands their fear, understands that even though they're children, he said, let them come unto me. And Matthew 25 said that as you minister unto the least of these, you know, there's such a debate going on in our nation. There's so much controversy about do we build the wall, do we not build the wall? And I believe we need to protect our citizens. We need security. We need protection. We need laws, and laws need to be followed. But we also need compassion. We also need the church to be the church, the body of Christ to be the body of Christ, and to stand up and to step up and say, these children matter to God, and they matter to us. So we're going to clothe them. We're going to feed them. We're going to house them and shelter them. We're going to teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ while we have them here so that wherever they end up going, they will know the source. The source is Jesus Christ, Jehovah Jireh, and He will never leave them and He will never forsake them. And so stay tuned because what we're doing this year and beginning this month, we have decided to build a house to accommodate 16 children on an ongoing basis, a beautiful home where they will be shown the love of Jesus Christ with house parents loving on them. Many of them have come over. You know, I've, I've sat in meetings and sat in the and heard the stories personally of children, and statistically, one out of three girls who is being carried over the border with. Um, by coyotes or by human traffickers, one out of three girls will be raped. The, the mothers now and the parents are giving the young girls birth control pills so that they won't get pregnant because the probability of them being raped is that high that they ask their daughters to start taking the birth control pills before they try to come across our border. And we as a ministry have been praying and fasting and saying, oh God, help us and let us make a difference while we have these children. They're still human beings. They still need to know 
that, that they matter. I interviewed a little 10-year-old boy here on the property. And uh, you could tell he was broken at 10. He was already broken. Now, Jesus is the healer, and Jesus can restore the broken places, but he was broken. And he had not seen his mother. Can you imagine at the age of 10, you, you, you haven't seen your mother in weeks and weeks and months and months. Thankfully, she, they can make phone communications. And it's nobody's fault. Our government is doing what they can do. Our, uh, where all the nonprofits are doing the best that we can do, you know, to try to treat these children and these families that are here. But what touched my heart about that young boy that was 10 years of age was the fact that we can make a difference in his life while we have him the months that he'll be on this property. We can show him we can teach him the Word of God. He'll be taught the Word of God that, he, that Jesus loves and Jesus cares about him. He'll be taught how to pray. He'll be given an education. He'll be taken care of if there's any sickness or illness. And isn't that what Jesus would do? Didn't he say in Matthew chapter 25 that one day when we stand before him that he would say, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. And they would say, but Lord, when did we clothe you? When did we feed you? And he said, as you have done it unto the least of these. These children are the least of these. They have no power. They have no influence. Many of them on this campus that I'm standing on here in Virginia at Youth for Tomorrow don't have any parents. And I came to this place about seven months ago for the first time. This is my second visit here. And when I stepped on this property, I wanted to find out for myself because some in the secular press had been reporting that children were being held in cages and children on the border, you know, were being taken in and mistreated and put in cages and so on. And when I came to this campus and I saw that this was one of the destinations that the government is sending the children to because it's such a trusted place, it's such an integrous place. The director, uh, Gary Jones, Dr. Gary Jones, was formerly the Secretary of Education for the United States of America under President Ronald Reagan. He has sat on the highest levels of cabinet in Washington, D.C. with presidents and served in the highest office of the Department of Education. He is the director of this program. And so you can imagine how excellent the ministry is that these kids are receiving in education. But what, is, what won me over was education is critically important. Health is critically important. But what we do for the soul of these children, the eternal soul of these children, is even more important. And I just believe that while they're here, for the months that they're held here until the government gets their act together, until the Congress sits down. The Bible said in Isaiah 1.18, Come, let us reason together. Republicans, Democrats, this is not a political program. This is a spiritual issue in our nation that we need God to heal. Because lives are at stake. Souls, children are perishing. People are dying. And we need to see God heal and bring reconciliation and solutions to this crisis. The first time I came here, I met three girls who had been raped on the journey to cross the border. They had been raped by the human traffickers that were bringing them, and they were pregnant. And one of them was nine months pregnant. And you know, you can see all of this stuff on the news. You can see it on the news and, and it's way out there and it's, oh, that's over there. 
But when you come somewhere and you see face to face, this is a real life. This is a real 16-year-old girl or one of those girls was 15 years old, raped and pregnant. We can all say, well, you know, you, you need to hear the stories of, of some of these children. And if it doesn't move you, then you're missing the very heart of Jesus. Because He cares. He cared about you when you were in a mess. He cared about me when I didn't even see any worth in myself. He saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And Jesus sees something in you, and He sees something in these children that only He can see. The world says they're trash. Even the politicians, I'm afraid, are saying they're trash. But God says they're treasure. God says they're precious. God says, clothe them, feed them, believe in them, teach them who I am, and thereby they will know who they are. What if all of your life, the greatest challenge that you faced was location, geography? These children are just as smart as my five children. They just, because of their geographical location, may never know the potential that lies in them. They're just as gifted, just as talented, but they don't have a chance. And I'll let the courts decide, I'm, I'm, but I, I, here's, here's what happens to them ultimately. But since they're here, since they're here, Shouldn't we, the church, the body of Christ, step up and say, we can do something about this. We can, we can make a difference in these children's lives. For the time that God has, by His sovereignty, allowed them to be here, we can make a difference by presenting to them the love of Jesus Christ when they pray with the parents in the homes and the leadership in the homes. They, they put 16 children in each home. They do life together. After the journey, most of the time, uh, from Guatemala, from Nicaragua, it takes about two weeks from what I could pick up in interviewing some of the children. It takes about two weeks of traveling on trains and cars, on foot. I can't imagine at 14, at 10, at 12. Mother's not there. Dad's not there. And when I get there, I don't know what's going to happen. And when they send, wherever they send me, I go. And I'm so thankful that this ministry, Youth for Tomorrow, Coach Joe Gibbs and the director of this program, Dr. Gary Jones, and the amazing staff, first class, first um, I don't know how to say it enough, that the people here, they're, they're not just a bunch of professionals. They have the heart of Jesus Christ, the compassion and love of Jesus Christ. And they're pouring it into these children. And it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And you know me if you've watched this program. And I know this is very different. If you watch our program, you normally see me in a pulpit preaching. And that's what we're going to continue to do. But every now and then, God stirs my heart. And He says, you can do something about that. i got to use somebody. And I feel today um, a burden to challenge every person watching this program. We're going to build this house quick. I brought a check today in advance for $100,000 to sew into this house. It's going to cost us $600,000 and some change. I'm just doing it by faith. I've got the first 100000 
I don't know where the rest of it's going to come from. Yes, I do. It's going to come from people just like you and just like me. It says, I want to do something more with my life than build my house and my life, but I want to build other people's life. And we may never hear the stories. I may never see those little brown faces of the children that I'm seeing even while I'm here again face to face. But one day in heaven, we can see them again. And so I, I, just, I just want to encourage you today. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And I want to encourage you today to show that love and make a difference in these children's lives. Every penny that you give will do two things with it. We'll preach the gospel, we'll pay the air bill. That's what I do with it. I don't receive a penny from television, nor do we pay anybody's salary from television from the money that you receive. Anything that you give pays for the gospel to go out to 240 nations of the world. And then anything left over, we build things like the children's home right here at Youth for Tomorrow. That we're going to build in the next six months. We're going to have it paid for debt free. We're going to clothe and we're going to feed and we're going to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to these precious children who are here. They're undocumented minors and they don't know where they're going to be six months from now, but they're here and while they're here, they're going to feel love. They're going to feel value. They're going to feel cherished. And they're going to feel the love of Jesus. They're going to have the seeds of, of, of the gospel and faith poured into them. And when they leave here, they're going to know who Jesus is. And they're going to know who they are. And every, you know, this isn't like a uh, big number. Sometimes we look for how big something is, although this is an amazing campus. But we're talking about building a house that's going to touch 16 children at a time, but they're orphans. And many of them have no parents. But we're going to show them the love of Jesus Christ. And I need your help. I'm depending 100%. I didn't sleep much last night because I felt like, Lord, we got to do this. We got to do this. And I knew I'd be here in this chapel. So I really want to encourage you. I know that he said, my sheep know my voice. All I really need is 600 people. We can do it today. And if we do, I'm going to build another one. But there's 600 of you that could just write a check today for $1,000. Or maybe there's 2,000 people watching who could sow a seed of $300. Say, you know, $300 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. If I were asking for myself, I would, I'd be ashamed and embarrassed. I'm not asking for myself. This is not anything to do with me. It's all about Jesus, and it's all about these children, and it's all about demonstrating the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's love in action. It's not talk. It's love in action. 
And what greater way to show the compassion and love of Jesus Christ than by taking care of these orphans. Will you pray about what God would have you do? Do your very best. If you sow that seed of $1,000 or $300, my announcer is going to tell you about a very, very special thing that we want to do. But even greater than that, to know that you're being a blessing is truly, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I want to pray for you in conclusion today. Father, I thank you for every person who's watching this telecast, this very special telecast that I feel your presence so strong right now because I know I'm doing what you would do for these children. When you were on this earth physically, you said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And the Bible said that he laid his hands upon them and he blessed them. I want us to be the hands of Jesus. I want us to be that compassionate heart that believes in the children and heals the children and teaches the children the love of Jesus Christ. Father, speak today. Speak, Lord. Give us a miracle on this house. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you can't figure out why in the world you're still watching a preacher on TV. Maybe you were an orphan. Maybe you were without a father all of your life. Maybe, maybe your family's so busted up and you don't know what to do and you're sitting there drinking yourself out of your mind or high on drugs. Something is reaching you now. It's the grace and the mercy and the love of Jesus Christ. So open up your heart and say, Lord, come in. Come into my home. Come into my life. Maybe you're at the lowest place you've ever been and you're wondering, does anybody care? Does anybody understand? Jesus does. Give Him your life. This is a kingdom connection. You, you, this is God. You know it's God. And you need to turn your life over to Him. That's why you need to dial the number that's on the screen. We want to hear from you. We believe in you. God believes in you. And He is ready to forgive you. Just say, Jesus, save me. And He won't turn you away. The name has the power. Say, Jesus, save me. And He'll do it. And we're going to help you. I want you to listen to my announcer now. He's going to tell you what you can do to be a part of the miracle of the children's home right here at Youth for Tomorrow. This year, over 700,000 children and young people entered the United States with no parents, sent to be trafficked, or worse, pushed across the borders with nowhere to turn and nobody to turn to. But we know that our God is a father to the fatherless, and we believe as the church, we have been called to the front line to help these children in the most desperate need. That's why we're partnering with Youth for Tomorrow to provide residential, educational, and outpatient services to these fatherless children. At Kingdom Connection, we believe that we are commanded to care for those in desperate need. And when we do, God promises to bless the work of our hands. You can join Jensen Franklin in building this brand new dorm by sowing your best gift of $30 or more. When you do, you'll receive the newly released Restart Your Heart 21-Day Devotional. For those who sow a special $1,000 seed to complete this project and leave a lasting legacy, you'll receive Jensen Franklin's best-selling book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt, with the Restart Your Heart Companion Devotional.
also appear on the Legacy Wall of Faith, and you'll receive a legacy certificate commemorating your generosity. This month, as an exclusive bonus, you'll receive the Jensen Franklin Legacy Bible with over 300,000 words of commentary and over 150 articles from decades of messages. The Legacy Bible will remind you and your family of God's faithfulness for generations to come. Visit us online to extend a hand of grace to these fatherless children in desperate need. In our closing moments together, I want to encourage you to help us with the project that we've undertaken that I believe is the very heartbeat of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said in Matthew 25, when you clothe, when you feed the least of these, you do it unto me. And I have felt God turn my heart toward the undocumented minors that are orphans, that have been thrown into our um, judicial system and while their fate is being decided by Congress they got to live somewhere they've got to stay somewhere and they're not going to be held in cages they're going to be brought to a place like I'm standing in in Bristow Virginia at Youth for Tomorrow an amazing Christ exalting ministry that is constantly filled to the brim with children who don't have parents who don't have anybody here. Some of them may have a mother that is being held also. But while they're here, the weeks and months that they're here, they're clothed, fed, taken care of, and most importantly, they're taught about Jesus Christ week in and week out, day in, day out. And when they leave here, they know who Jesus is and they know who they are. And we're building a home on this campus. It's an orphan's home where 16 children at a time will be housed and clothed and fed. It's an amazing project. It's going to cost 600000 maybe 650000 but we're in that ballpark. And we're under construction as I speak. We've already given the first check of $100,000. And I'm believing God to speak to people just like you. And I'm asking you to help us. We need your help. This is a beautiful, powerful project, but I can't do it without your help. I mean, I believe there's 600 people watching right now that could say, I can make a difference with a $1,000 gift and just go on and build it debt-free, Pastor Franklin. Or maybe you're watching and you can't do that, but... I'm just agreeing that maybe there's 2,000 people watching that could give a one-time gift of $300. I do what I promise. We made a commitment that we'll do what we say we do. You can follow us around and you'll see exactly that we do what we promise we will do. And I encourage you today to make a difference in these children's lives. Let's be the body of Christ. Let's stand and let's say together, we can really, really love these children like Jesus has called us to love them. And we can make a difference in their life. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. My announcer is going to tell you more. This year, over 700,000 children and young people entered the United States with no parents. Sent to be trafficked or worse, pushed across the borders with nowhere to turn and nobody to turn to. But we know that our God is a father to the fatherless. And we believe as the church, we have been called to the front line to help these children in the most desperate need. That's why we're partnering with Youth for Tomorrow to provide residential, educational, and outpatient services to these fatherless children. At Kingdom Connection, we believe that we are commanded to care for those in desperate need. And when we do, God promises to bless the work of our hands. You can join Jensen Franklin in building this brand new dorm by sowing your best gift of $30 or more. When you do, you'll receive the newly released Restart Your Heart 21-Day Devotional. For those who sow a special $1,000 seed to complete this project and leave a lasting legacy, you'll receive Jensen Franklin's best-selling book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt, with the Restart Your Heart Companion Devotional. 
Your name will also appear on the Legacy Wall of Faith, and you'll receive a Legacy Certificate commemorating your generosity. This month, as an exclusive bonus, you'll receive the Jensen Franklin Legacy Bible with over 300,000 words of commentary and over 150 articles from decades of messages. The Legacy Bible will remind you and your family of God's faithfulness for generations to come. Visit us online to extend a hand of grace to these fatherless children in desperate need. sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry.